A mother says her son was sold by students in a mock slave auction. Well, instead of those responsible getting reprimanded or even the boot, it seems we just keep reliving that old episode of Roots. My thoughts on the mic. Hello, good people. This is your guy, Mr. Educated, Mr. Communicated, Mr. Free Thinker, coming back at you live once again from the Lone Star State with another edition of the Meter Mike Speaks. All right, good people. It is 37 minutes past the hour, and yes, we are the voice of the everyday citizen. All right, good people. One of my subscribers sent me this story, and I do believe I'd heard about it. It's been buzzing around, but just in case you have not, here we go again, as you saw in the title. What is with these slave auctions? In high school. Now you know in my last videos. You saw a lot of unrest. In the high schools. What's been going around. Teachers being assaulted. Teachers assaulting students. Teachers fighting back I would say. Just students acting out. <sighs> but somehow. This keeps rearing its ugly head. We just still can't get rid of these ideas of having a slave auction. Now, if we want to talk about critical race theory, let's talk about critical race theory, shall we? But before we even get into that about banning critical race theory, we have to look at this. Why is that an issue? CRT, but then this is allowed to go on. This is allowed to be. This doesn't make any sense. Now, let's get to the story, good people, and I'll give you my thoughts on this. Some black students at J.S. Water School in Golston, uh, this must be uh, this North Carolina, were reportedly sold by class classmates at a mock slave auction. A North Carolina school district is offering a vague response to reports that these students were uh, K through 8, you know, were sold by classmates at this auction, good people. Now, it was a... a um, one of the uh, children's mother who discovered this, she said she shared a Facebook post that her son experienced a slave auction by his classmates, and when he opened, uh, when he opened up, we were made aware that this type of stuff seems to be the norm so much that he didn't think it was worth sharing. Unquote. So I guess they badgered him where they asked him to tell about it, and he went ahead and said it. The mother, Ashley Palmer, wrote in a, in the Facebook post on March 4th that her son shared that his friend went for three hundred and fifty dollars and another student was the slave master because he knew how to handle them, uh, unquote. Uh, well, you, okay, you see where I'm going with this, okay. Her son attends Jazz Water School, which is located about 50 miles southwest of Raleigh. The school is 68% white, 12% black, and 12% Hispanic, according to the News and Observer Report. Uh-huh. Goes on to say, we ha we even have a video of students ha are harmonizing the N-word, according to Ms. Palmer. Since when were children so blatantly uh, racist? Okay, now here's my point. Well, as long as their parents continue to teach them, or, or whoever they are, guardians, this will continue to happen. As long as adults continue down this path, most likely this is what's going on, you're going to get incidents like this. And this has happened here in Texas also, good people, in our own Lone Star State, even overseas in England. It's gone on too. Now she goes on to say, it's a shame my child isn't safe at school. Palmer wrote in an update last Monday, where is the staff when this is happening? Now when my son gets fed up, will they protect him the way they have protected this other child? Unquote. Probably not. But I can tell you what I would do. And I'll tell you about that in the end. While thanking people in the comments of the post, Palmer added that the incident is, is a reality of black Americans daily and not, and not special or specific to my children in our community, unquote. Palmer continue, continued that her son is stronger than ever, adding that we will continue to do our part to make sure every racist child and faculty member is reported for every blatant act and micro, microaggression. His experiences, yes, unquote. Okay, we we use it stronger than ever. Be strong and all this type of stuff. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. Now the school superintendent apologized for the slave auction, the mock slave auction, in which 
in, in which white middle schoolers pretended to sell their black classmates. This is bad. A coalition of local groups called on the Monday board uh, on the board Monday to address the situation at the Jarris Water School in Ghoston and required the instigators to apologize. News outlet reported, "This is what we do. We are going to do. I'm sorry. This is what we want. This is what we do all the time." I demand an apology. I'll get to that, good people. My thoughts. I'll, I'll get to that. But let's continue here. The mock auction happened in the presence of staff and faculty, <laughs> and was recorded on video. <laughs> oh, wow. According to the Chatham Organization, Organizing for Racial Equity Press release. <sighs> Thank God for technology. The coalition also wants the district to raise the penalties for school employees who engage in racist behaviors, including making it a fireable offense. Now, I do agree with that. Now, we are getting somewhere. Christy Wagner made an emotional plea to the board saying she learned what happened on the baseball field from another parent and had to explain to her biracial son why he shouldn't have to suffer such racism in silence. Christy, I pretty much know what race Christy's is and biracial son, so these Carolinas have an issue with that. I was uh, stationed there for a while. It actually, it was South Cadillac, as, it, as it's called, Carolina, short for, you know, yeah, um, Fort Jackson, where I did basic combat training over 25 years ago. So, yeah, I know about the Carolinas pretty well. The Virginians too. Now it goes on to quote, the reality is is these acts of racism are not only happening here in, in Chatham County, but across North Carolina and across the country, said Wagner, man, South Carolina. More should be done around addressing racism in schools because no parents should have to stand here after hearing their son was sold in a slave trade at school, unquote. I do agree with you, ma'am, I really do. I empathize with you. Yes. Now, before presenting the school board with an action plan, Superintendent Anthony Jackson offered an apology. He goes on to quote here, good people, as a newcomer to our school system and to this community, before I offer any plans, I want to do something that needs to be done here publicly. I want to uh, offer an apology. These apologies be going around. Man, I'm sorry. They need to go back to Ruben Studdard. Maybe they need to go talk to Ruben Studdard and, and listen to his soundtrack. He, he'll give you more of I'm sorry. An apology to every single student who has ever felt unsafe while in our care. To every student who has ever felt demeaned, disrespected, or marginalized because of their race, ethnicity, sex, gender, religion, or disability. Okay, sir. I'll give you that one. Jackson's action plan included changes in the district policy to how discriminatory situations would be handled from start to finish. Why does the district policy need changing? So I guess in the policy, it's okay to do things like this. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Including notification of parents and guardians, investigation, discipline, social support, and resources for victims, staff training, and an after action plan. So I guess it didn't have all of that. I guess the old district policy doesn't have these things. The board voted unanimously to adopt the <laughs> His action plan. So I, uh, I stand. Um, no, I don't stand correct. And I'm correct. Apparently, it did not have these things. Goes on to say, we reach, we, uh, when reach for more information on the incidents, the Chatham County School District referred CNN to a letter that Jackson sent to the community and his comments during the board meeting. Okay, now my thoughts, good people. Well, we know that racism is alive and well. And that people of color are usually the victims of the majority of racism or racist acts, as I should say. But it still seems to me that power is still lacking. You see, power doesn't scream or yell or cause a big scene. It just acts. It gets its lawyers to file suit for emotional damages and distress. You just remove your child and move on. You get your settlement, you have those responsible removed. You then advocate for change as well as an apology later in that order. You see, I believe we are too old for apologies. That's for children. Adults know better. No excuses. They knew exactly what they were doing. If you have no power, you have no voice. I believe things like this will continue as long as this is allowed to continue. So, and that's what we need to start looking at. A zero tolerance. No, I don't want an apology. You, you, can, you, can, you can do that all you want. I want results. 
and I'm going to get them. Or I will bankrupt your school. Simple as that. Or bankrupt you and embarrass you and so forth. Then you can do the apology later. You know, as those Hebrew individuals, you know, that's how they do it. You know, really. But anyway, that's my thoughts on that. You tell me what you think about this, good people or not. This is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker. Subscribe, share, and like to keep me rocking on the mic. Have a good night. They'll understand you soon, it won't be long. Keep on, keep on, keep on.